Hey besties, what's up? What's T? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ryan for real. And if you are new to my channel, I ask that you subscribe before you leave. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. You guys, I'm coming to y'all today with a updated q and A. It's been like forever since I've done a QA. and I think my last q and A was around my first Vlogtober experience was what, 2021? And then I attempted to do an updated Q&A around the time there was a storm going on. But, but that didn't go so well. Anyway, today is the day I will be doing an updated Q&A. I went on Instagram and I put in my story to ask me any question that you would like to ask me for this Q&A today. And I have so many great questions and I am here to share it with you. You. Without further ado, let's go. First question, if you have or had any regrets, what would they be? Hmm, hmm, regrets. I don't have many regrets, y'all, I really don't. Um, but if I was to have a regret, I regret missing out on several opportunities that I had throughout my YouTube career. Like for example, there was a lot of opportunities for me to learn from, and instead of me taking that advice and applying it, um, I just did things my way and allowed myself to fail several times. I could go on and on about it, but y'all, I started YouTube back in, what, 2017? And it, it's a lot of, it's a, <laughs> a lot of growth since then. Uh, a lot of my OGs that follow me on this channel can contest to that. Like, it's been... It's a lot of growth. <laughs> so yeah, I would say me not taking the advice to better my content. I just wanted to do things my way. And you know, sometimes the way that you want to do things is not the right way. And you know, you, you have those fairy godfathers and fairy godmothers that's trying to guide you to be on the right path and be successful. And sometimes, you know, you can't be so stubborn. And that was me, I was very stubborn. I want to do things my way. I'm like, this is my channel, I'm gonna do it my way. Uh-uh. Next question. As a child, what did you get in trouble with the most? Y'all, I'm not gonna do something that I've done a lot as a child, and that's lie. I'm not gonna lie. I was a liar. I used to lie, and I used to steal so much. Like, I was a little baby criminal. It was, it was so bad, and I reflect on that all the time. I'm like, dang, man. I used to just, I think it was because when I was younger, it's like, no matter what I did, like I can wake up in the morning, I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> like, I used to get in trouble for everything, like me just smiling. Having a great day, I was still getting in trouble. It's like, trouble was always coming my way, so I used to lie myself out of trouble. And um, a lot of things wasn't given to me, so I had to take it. I mean, I'm just being, I'm just being real with y'all. Um, so I used to very much steal a lot and um, lie, just lie my way out of anything. Like, currently, what is the most challenging thing on your plate? Hmm. I say one of the most challenging things on my plate right now. I'm gonna come back to that question. <laughs> I know that you are interested in men, but have you ever dated a woman? If so, what was the worst experience you ever had with a female? Mm. So I, I never dated a woman. When I was a teenager, like a young adult, I dated a young lady. So to answer your first question, yes, I've dated females before um, a lot. Like I had all pros in every different area codes. Okay. But not for real. Um, I say the worst experience was my last girlfriend from high school. Um, I think where the problem was, she was raised by a strong, independent woman. And before we even dated, we were really close friends. And she always reminded me so much of her mother. Like she was just so headstrong on things and she made a lot of decisions on her own. And you know, it's it's just puppy love type shit. Like, we, we in high school, it's, it's, it's really not that serious. With some people, high school love is serious, but it wasn't that serious with me, because hello, I like men 
anyway. So it was kind of like, it wasn't that serious. So anyway, um, the issues that we were having in that relationship was, you know, it was either her way or the highway. Like she was very controlling on who I talked to, who I hung around with. It just was a miserable relationship. And, and I remember one thing she told me, like when we were in our friend stage, she said, no matter who she's in a relationship with, she will always go back to her ex dude, which was older. He was out of high school. He was actually in college. And with us bumping heads a lot, she was caught several times with her ex in many occasions. And that information was always sent back to me, but I really don't focus on he say, she say. I won't believe it unless I see it. I always been like that. And one time she said that she was going somewhere with her mother. I think she said like a party or a church gathering, something like that. It wasn't specific, but she ended up being in a wedding um, and she was with her ex. That was her plus one. And I was at that wedding as well. So yeah, she busted. It's two them clock in the morning, where you been? Next question said, what are the most terrifying thoughts you may have or had? Y'all, uh, y'all, that is a great question. I was actually talking about this last night. You know, one of the most terrifying thoughts is when you are up high. Now, mind you, I'm not afraid of heights. I can be up high. But that weird thought and whisper that you have in your ear and in your head telling you to jump. I know I'm not the only one. Like, I really thought I needed to talk to somebody about that. I, I just know. Y'all cannot sit there in these comments and tell me that, okay, you need help for that. I know I'm not the only one. Just think about it. If you walk in over something that's water, y'all hear nothing that say jump. You high up, jump, jump. I feel like if I'm up high and I'm secured, I will feel just fine. Nothing will encourage me to jump unless it's something like bungee jumping or you jumping off the building, you're attached to a harness or something like that. You know, that's totally different because I already have in the mindset that, you know, bitch, we about to jump, you know what I mean? But if I'm like not secure and I'm up high, something just whisper jump. Just keeping it real, girl. When you and Shrika visited Atlanta to meet the Batty Twins, what was your experience? Um, first and foremost, we did not go to Atlanta to meet the Betty Twins. We actually went to Atlanta to enjoy our brother and sister time. It was a brother and sister trip, but we just so happened to link up with the Betty Twins. And the experience was awesome. Like when I tell y'all, they were so welcoming and the vibe was just so real. It was genuine. It was like nothing was staged. It wasn't planned. It was literally everybody being themselves, enjoying our time. We actually stayed longer um, than we expected to stay over there. <laughs> like, like, you know, it was just like, oh, we're not trying to, you know, wear out our welcome, but we were just engaging with each other, had some laughs, and um, it was nothing but love. So yeah, the Betty Twins, they are very, very sweet individuals. Now this question right here is very popular. I've been avoiding this question for the past two years. Um, but the question is, are you and your old best friend still friends? The answer is no. I mean, I think I, I've said that before, like the answer is no. Of course y'all wanna know why, to keep it nice, sweet and simple. People grow. People want more in life. Others don't. Others try to stop you. Others try to do things to hurt you, hurt your future. So, you know, you have to grow apart. You have to let that go. That's all. We're going to leave it at that. Please do not ask again. What is something that you absolutely would not tolerate? You guys, I have zero tolerance for disrespect because I'm a very respectful person. I will always treat others and approach them how I would like to be approached. Respect others, respect yourself. Next question asks, what is your dating status? <sighs> 
it's complicated. <laughs> no, not for real. Um, I'm currently dating. Nothing serious. Nothing. Nothing serious. Um, I I feel like ever since I became an adult. Um, ever since the age of 18, I always inspired to be with someone, be with a man. Um, I always wanted someone. And now that I'm older and I done been through the ring of honey, um, I really don't care to really be in a serious relationship. Um, when I when I tell y'all that I'm really focusing on myself, my future, my well-being, my wealth, my health. It, that's all me. And um, with me dating or having a little consistent tender, you know, while I'm dating other people, like that's that's where I am. I mean, me and my little boo thing, we're on the same page when it comes to that. You know, I go on my dates or whatever. I, I see other people, um, but nothing serious. I'm just out here living my life safely, of course. Don't ever get it twisted for those that may come for me and say, oh, that's so dangerous, everything that's out here. I'm very aware, especially in my community, I'm very aware of the things that's out there and I do everything safely. Next question, name a time you had to grind so hard to prevent taking an L. Let's see. I mean, first and foremost, the grind never stop. <laughs> But a time that I had to grind so hard to prevent taking an L. Um, a few years back, I had a roommate and there was something that happened at the job which the end result turned into um, termination. When he got fired, he didn't want to work. So I'm like, okay, you need to be applying for food stamps. You need to be looking for a job. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. And he was like, okay, yeah, I will. In actuality, he wasn't. My y'all, we had paid our rent up about two months in advance. So we were paid up for two months, but when the third month hit and everything was due, he didn't have his, his share. So, with me thinking that he was out looking for a job the whole time, he was camping out over friends and family house. And it was in one case, I thought he did have a job. Um, by the time it was time to pay the rent, I only had my half. So we had a lot of eviction notice threats on our door, like just about every month. So I took it upon myself to hustle, hustle hard. I was doing dinners every pay period. I used to make so much money doing that, but of course I had to put a lot of that money inside of buying the groceries. So the profit was pretty decent. Um, and I was able to, you know, hold us up until he was able to, you know, get a job and things like that. But it's a whole lot, a whole lot. That was a time where I had to hustle hard to prevent getting an eviction on my credit and my name. Um, because I'm like, dang, this was my first apartment. I'm young and I just don't want to spend seven years trapped waiting for this to fall off of my credit and I'm not able to get my own. You know, it, it was just, it was a lot. Um, but it was times where I just, I used to just cry because I never was able to really enjoy myself, enjoy the things I was doing. And this was around the time where I was, you know, just starting on YouTube. So I really wasn't able to put a lot into it by buying products, like when I was doing mukbangs and things like that. Like I was, I was broke. <laughs> I was broke paying all the bills by myself and things like that, trying to make sure that, you know, I didn't get kicked out or I was drowning, you know. So yeah, that was a time. If you are ready, <laughs> tell us about your first heartbreak. Hmm, my very first heartbreak. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, I, this, this was back in like 2015, I wanna say, 2015. I was seeing this guy, he was in the Navy. Um, we were dating for about five, maybe six months. When I tell you this boy, it was like he showed me the world. Like, 
all we did was hang out, go on dates. Like we talk all day long, um, all night long. You know, while he at work, while I'm at work, we just text. Like he really made me feel so good. And as I'm talking about it and thinking about that part of the relationship, it was just so bomb. He was a chef that ended up going to the Navy. And um, I was just, ugh, I was just so in love with that. But like, he just, oh, he was just so, ugh. Anyway, um, the last time I've seen him, we went on a date, we went out for drinks. And um, when we went back to his place, you know, I wanted to get a little, you know, a little nasty. I think, because I think, I, I always think about that moment. I think he thought that I was drunk and I was doing some things that I wouldn't naturally do. I guess because I waited so long to try to get at him. But child, when I first met him, I was trying to get at him. Like I already knew that he was going to fill my inside parts. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So we went out for um, drinks and we went back to his place and you know, we kissing and stuff. And you know, I just wanted to go to third base. We always stop before we even get to second base. So this time I managed to go to second base, but before it happened, he stopped me. He was like, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I was like, but I do. It was, it was real cute. Uh, you know, he was satisfied. I was satisfied that he was satisfied. We went to sleep. We had a whole day planned. Like, oh my goodness, we were supposed to go to the park, have a picnic after the park. We were supposed to go to the movies, grab something to eat. Um, Cause this was on the Sunday and he had to work Monday. So, you know, we, we just wanted to like really plan around Sunday to really spend some time with each other. Child, the next day, he woke up with a whole <sighs> typical, typical. I woke up the next morning. He was like, oh, I'm glad you up. He said, um, so change your plans. I'm going to do this, this, and the third, whatever he said, I don't remember. And I'm like, oh, okay, so we're not hanging out. He was like, yeah, just call me later. We can, we can link up later. I said, okay. So I'm getting ready to leave and whatever, whatever. He was like, oh yeah, and don't forget this, don't forget that. So I'm like, weird. You know, <laughs> like, don't forget this, don't forget that. Like, what's what's going on? He was like, yeah, you know, cause you need to wash your things or whatever, whatever. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it home so I can wash it and bring it back. Ciao. I called him, he told me to call him when I get home. I called him, he didn't answer. Text him, let him know I was home. I haven't heard from him all day. Then I text him good morning the next day. Didn't hear from him. So I called him later on that night. He didn't answer the phone. So I just said, I was like, okay, well let me not reach out to him. Let me just, you know, chill, see if he'll reach out to me. He didn't reach out to me. I haven't talked to him in three days. So I sent him this long message, you know, I don't know what's going on, I hope you're okay. Um, you know, I, I really did did not know what was going on. Like, I was just so hurt. He never responded. So I go on the app that we met off of. He was active on the app. So yeah, it was just, I was just so confused. So, um, the way I cope with it, when I tell y'all that everything was off about me, the way I communicated with people, um, it ruined my um, productivity at work. Um, I was working way below um, average. I was very sluggish. Every day I got off work, I grabbed me a big old pack of Funyuns and some gelato, and I used to go home and watch Mary Jane and close in my room and just cry and eat my gelato and, my Funyuns, and I used to just lock myself in the room. Um, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I never answered my phone for anyone unless it was him. You know, my phone rang. I'm trying to see if it's him. And I was, he he just, he got me, honey. That was my very, very first heartbreak. I, I didn't know what to do. Um, 
and that's been going on for about two months. I gained a lot of weight, a lot of weight. I was a little skinny mini, you know, but I gained a lot of weight. Um, I went from being like 210 to 265, and yeah. Thanks for asking that question. All right, y'all, I'm gonna answer probably like one or two more questions and it's time to go. Hey, Ryan, what is it that encourages your confidence? Hmm. Honestly, self-love, man. Um, I shared this story plenty of times, so it's no need for me to like really elaborate so long on it. But, um, you know, as a child growing up, um, people used to want me to hate myself because of my skin complexion. You know, I was just so dark. I was just so black. And I was this and I was that. And it's like, I started to believe those people that wanted me to hate myself, that hated how I look. And um, I, at one point, I just stopped crying about it. I cried about it for years, probably like 11, 12 years of my life. I just hated myself my skin my ears my nose like i got big nose you know i'm mr bell pepper nose my big ears when i have my little cut i used to hate little cuts because my i felt like my ears stuck out like this it's like girl so it took years i think i was like 15 16 years old it took me at that moment to mute the outside world look at myself in the mirror like the mirror was my best friend. I used to just sit there and stare at myself and admire the the way God made me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just started, ended up, <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, but I literally would turn into Beyonce. Like everything she do as her confident, like, you know, when she looked confident on stage and in her videos, I used to do the exact same poses and everything in the mirror. To be real, you probably laughing, but I'm, I'm so serious. I'm. You know, just being real. So every last pose, every last hair flip, hair swing, like every day, that's what I, that's what I did. Like that was a ritual for me. Um, and I used to just do it until I actually believed it. Like I'm the Beyonce of my world. I did put a question on the back burner. Let's answer it. The question was currently, what is the most challenging thing on your plate? The most challenging thing on my plate right now? Ooh. Y'all, I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't, I really don't know. If I, even when I'm having a bad day, I have a good day. Does that make sense? Like when a lot of crap is thrown my way, I always find the good because God is so good to me. And it's like when trouble come my way or unfortunate events come my way, it's just, I start praising for the good and the bad. I just give honor to he like, that's, that's just, I can't really think of anything on my plate right now that is challenging or I can say the most challenging thing on my plate right now is figuring out what I'm gonna do with this apartment as far as decoration. Like, let's, let's be real. Like, it's, it's getting real challenging. <laughs> like, I still got all that space back there. What I'm gonna do? Uh, <laughs> I gotta go online and find me a dang on table to put back there. So that's that's really like the only thing, y'all. Like, I just, I just be chilling. I'm good. Um, life is good. God is good. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm I'm just so high and nothing can touch me. Absolutely not. I'm just letting y'all know, like, my faith is bigger than my problems. So, no, that's, that's what it is. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up right here. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. Before you leave, please share some of your favorite moments of the videos. You can definitely, you know, chime in with the questions or like my answers or whatever. If you feel where I'm coming from, please don't hesitate to comment below. Make sure you like this video. That will really help me. It's free. You know, it ain't nothing but a boop. 
Go ahead and like this video for me and subscribe if you are new here. I love y'all and I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye. <laughs>